Connor, Connor, man, uh, much respect to you, you know, headlining your first Las Vegas show, so you know, much respect to you, man, but what do you say to the American fans who may be a little skeptical of everything? I know you won your appeal yeah. Yeah. with the British Board of Boxing Control, but still not, they, they, they didn't let you fight back in November, the, so what do well, you say? Yeah. It's a shame, do you know what I mean? you got to remember, I didn't just win the hearing. I won the case for the WBC as well. So the WBC cleared me in January. We're forgetting that. I passed all my UCAT tests. I was cleared to fight. I won the hearing. They chose to appeal. What am I supposed to do? You know, just wait for that. To, just wait. You know, even though I've been cleared by the organization whose test it was, but also won the hearing. So, what more do you want me to do? If they're skeptical, then that's not my problem. Do you understand it though? When, when you know, it's just it's high level elite sports. That's not, that's not my pro that's not my problem. Yeah, I mean, it's, of course, people are going to use that that narrative. You know, I got it out of the mud, but the reality is, you don't have to get it out of the mud. Like, so because I come from a privileged upbringing, I can't be a boxer. You know, that's the reality of it. People want to get out of the mud and yeah that's a that's a great story I and mean, we love a you know underdog story but the reality is you can be any background you can be any culture you can be any live in any country you can be whatever you want to be irrelevant of your background or your upbringing does, uh, does it put any pressure on it I prepare for everyone diligently hard, so for me it doesn't matter who he is, you know, if he's, you know, it could be King Kong, it could be Mickey Mouse. I mean, I'm going to prepare exactly the same way. It don't make no difference to me. I work extremely hard, um, and I'm, you know, I'm dedicated to the game. So. For me, that's that. I don't, I don't want to take your mind off Saturday, but I have to ask you, because Eubank's even came out today saying that Eubank doing it for it doesn't happen. He's not a 160 pounder anymore. He's at 186 for the most walking around. Any response to that? Or, you know, he, he's saying about Harlem. Of course he's going to do that. Harlem's one paying him, not Chris. Not Junior. So, that's, of course he's going to say that. Um, which is a, a shame because I wouldn't want to be taking food out of any of my, you know, out of my son's mouth especially. So, you know, that's, that's that. Did you hear his uh, assessment of Dobson too? He said... Uh, Whose assessment? Uh, Chris Eubank Sr. I guess no. he said that they, they, they dug him up while he was still warm. Like that's an old term that they used to... In terms of, you know, lowering the... the Who said that? Eubank Sr.? Senior, yeah, about, about Peter Dobson. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Like, uh, like he's a Forbes type thing. Like you dug him up from the grave, but oh, he's still alive. He, 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 he's a soft opponent is what he's trying to say. Yeah, I mean, everyone's a soft opponent until they're not. You know, so for me, it's like he's that guy, that Mexican I last fought. He's that guy. You know, that then fights that if you don't prepare hard, you can end up messing up. It's just so much at stake. You can't afford to overlook. You can't afford to make mistakes. You can't afford to put one foot wrong, you know, when it's so much at stake. So for me, I prepare for everyone as if they are my world title. I've done that throughout my whole career, but that's why I've developed the way I have, you know. So for me, it's like, if, if it's a warm-up fight, I plan on making it look like a warm-up fight. You know, I don't want no tune-up fights or no warm-up fights being fights that they shouldn't be. You know, for what? Because of, you know, not being dedicated, because of being lazy, because they're not preparing diligently. No, not on my watch. Do you have any extra motivation to clear your name since people will still be skeptical? Like, no, that's not, the, but that's never the case. You know, you, what more do you want me to do? I've been cleared. I've been cleared. What, more, what do you want me to do? You know, I passed all my UCAD tests. Brett, what, what more do you want me to do? I, I guess I mean more, do you think it's something that'll go away if you just continue to win fights? I bet no. The tests and the commission? People will always yeah. find an um, excuse for my success. I've just been approved in Nevada to fight. I've been approved in Orlando. I'm approved everywhere around the world. Now you ask yourself, what's the agenda? when I've been cleared by the WBC, when I've won the hearing, when I've been approved to fight in Nevada, one of the strictest commissions around the world. Now you ask me, you're asking the wrong questions. So why do you think they're singling you out, you feel? 
I don't know. You seem to have done your homework, so do your homework on it and you'll find out. What were some of the, the things that they require you to do and that you passed? Like, obviously, there's probably other drug, uh, other I'm samples. Yeah. And it, so was those other samples cleared and they just kind of kind of went in and was like, well, it's not good enough, essentially? Sorry, you lost me. No, it was like, you know, what, like they always have like the A sample, the B sample. Like, what were some of the things that they, I guess, made there was a re There was a reason why. There's a valid reason why. What A WADA case study done a study on it. If you Google WADA, Clomiphene, it will tell you everything you need to know. And that was the evidence. I didn't even know that was the case. Um, I know my dad not far out in one round though. Um, but for me, it's just a blessing to be fighting over here because the Ben name is familiar over here. And it's, um, it's a blessing to be headlining Vegas. I mean, who would have thought? You know, at 27 years young, no amateur experience, turned pro at 19, worked extremely hard, and you know, to be headlining Vegas and seeing my name up in them lights is a blessing. It's another big fight, okay, so I don't if it's at the same time. Well, 22 fights, none of them have been a boring fight. You know, I always give people value for money, um, I always entertain, and that's my. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm here to do. It's the entertainment business. Quite Shizzy, it's a great fight. Um, I don't know who I got in that. It's a 50-50 fight. I know Aziz probably is the underdog, but they're great fights. You like who you like. You know, if you want to watch a, um, a devastating knockout, you know where to tune in. Now, there's, a, there's an American uh, fighter, John Bruce Ennis. I yeah. know that. That's a fight that American fans would love to see you and him. I mean, is that a fight that Eddie and you guys can actually get to work out? Because no one seems to want to okay. fight. I've been calling the name, and I know you've seen me call the name. So for me, it's like, Jared, no problem. You know, people saying he's the boogeyman or everyone's scared or no one's scared. Do you know what I mean? No one's scared over here anyway. You know, so for me, he's a great fighter, talented, extremely gifted. Um, you can't, you can't knock that, you know. But for someone who's had so much amateur experience and someone who hasn't, I still feel ready for that fight. You know, because the pro game is a different game. You know, if I had had 33 fights, you know, fighting Van Herden, I fought Van Herden in my 19th fight. You know, so and I've done exactly the same thing. When Virgil Ortiz fought Samuel Vargas, done exactly the same thing, if not quicker. You know, when Sean Porter fought Sebastian Formella, done exactly the same thing, but better. You know, so that's my comparison. So, you know, I'm ready for them sort of fights. If, they, if them fights are presented to me, I'll take them. We offer Barrios the fight, we offer Ramirez the fight. You know, so you guess the fight, Thurman the fight. Let's make all these fights. I'm willing to come to the States. I'm not sure I'm coming over here. And also Devin Haney as well. I know that's been circling a little bit. Yeah, I, I, he wasn't even in my radar, Haney. You know, the, the, Bill Haney mentioned my name. I said, yeah, no problem. Let's get a fight on. And then he started being disrespectful. And, you know, but I know he isn't even that guy. You know, he ain't got to always be disrespectful and brush and rude. And, you know, well, I don't know why you want to be, carry yourself like that. You know, but if he wants to fight, the fight's there. He wasn't on my radar. But we can make that fight anytime. Do you kind of relate to Tim Zhu? Like, he's, he's kind of trying to accomplish the same things you are, same kind of background with the dad who was the champion. And, yeah. Tim Zhu's killing it. Tim Zhu's killing it. And I know he conducts himself very, like, as if the pressure don't affect him. It's, you've, always, you've always got that on your, on your, you know, on your shoulder. You've always got that there in your head that your dad is a living legend. You know, Costa Zhu's a living legend. And Tim Zhu's... You know, doing his own thing. I can't even say filling his shoes because he's got his own shoes and he's doing his own thing. You know, he's probably the most spoken about fighter in Australia, probably the, the number one pound pound in Australia currently. So, you know, you've got to rate it. You know, even being through the adversity he went through being put down early on in his career um, to now getting where he is, you've got to rate it. Connor, I just want your thoughts. You've talked about uh, not being shy fighting in, in America. You did part of your training camp in California. Just wanted your thoughts. How was that experience? Uh, what was the work like? And could we see more camps of you here in the United States? I think LA um, at the Matchroom Churchill's Boxing Gym will probably be a place where I based quite a few of my camps uh, moving forward. Um, you know, my team uh, has sorted out. The, it's like home away from home. You know, my team have arranged that sort of setup. So, you know, I think 
I think it's great over here. The quality of sparring, the different styles. You got the American styles. You got the Philly shoulder roll. You the got the, the Mexicans. You know, done plenty of rounds with Mexicans. Tough come forward. You have the boxers. So there's so many different varieties of sparring and work that that we can get in here. And then running up, you know, the big bear, and you know, there's just so much here. And training out in the heat is always bad. And getting up at three in the morning and it's minus four. Do you, do you, is, it, is it hard to focus on the fight itself when the appeal is on the horizon? You've got questions, you know, kind of constantly about the process. Are you, are you, do you feel like you're dialed into the fight or is it um, kind of niggling in the back of your no, mind? No, it's definitely there. Yeah. It's definitely there. You've got to remember my whole career, I've had the luxury of not having this issue. Mm. Just being able to focus fully on my training. My team's doing the best they can to allow me to fully focus, but it's still there. What happens if, you, if it goes your way? What will, you, what will you do and how will you feel? Relief, probably break down. Like it's like it is there, you know. So for me, it's just I just need this chapter in my book closed. Like I just need this closed. It's like I won the hearing, I won the case with the WBC. I won the hearing. It's like, oh, just, can we just end this? Whatever it is, like just let's let this end. And what happens if it doesn't go your way? Do you feel like you'll set up shop more over here in America? I'm not about running away from my problems. Mm. You know, as you can see with everything that's gone on, I tackle it head on. I haven't ever run away from this. You know, I went to Australia when this had just happened for maybe two weeks with my family and I said, I said to my family, I've got to go back home. I can't run from this. I need to face this head on. I can't feel like I'm just escaping and running from the problem. You know, I'll shout from the rooftops, I'll protest, I'll do everything I can. I'll, you know, I'm, I wear my heart on my sleeve, I'm vulnerable, I, I, I am what I am. You know, so I can't just slip off into nowhere yeah. and listen to the lawyers and don't say anything because it's not who I am. You know, that to me screams guilty. I'm never, mm. I will, you know, when it's testing your character and targeting who you are as a man and what you stand for and what you represent, no, I'll, st I'll, keep my, I'll, st I'll stand and keep my feet firm. Last it, question, please. Do you, do you feel um, Thanks, with, with um, Victor Conti constantly poking at you, you're enrolled in Vada, he kind of complimented you also on Twitter. Is there he like complimented me. Well, he's saying he complimented you because you're enrolled in Vada. I've been enrolled for ages. Correct. But I'm, I'm just saying recent tweets. It's like he's attacking you and then complimenting you. Yeah. Do you know what? Social media is a funny place. Like, social media can lead people into a false security say what they want to say and then I see them in person or in real life and trust me I promise you this has happened to me over the past 18 months where people saying what they've got to say I turn up yes bro what's happening is Victor Carter you're talking about no oh. not Victor but in general social media okay. is a funny place okay. social media is the minority people can get away with saying what they want to say on social media but when it comes down to it in real life the, the energy is different I mean you saw today just, just in my press conference it's different energy stand on what you believe in if I say something I mean it I don't pretend I don't make up this is what I stand on this is how I'm going to say it and this is how I say it to your face you know people aren't like that they use, use social media as they walk into your living room give you a slap and feel like they can just walk back out but when it's in person they can't they can't do that kind of last thing uh you're sorry, fighting here in sorry. Vegas for the first time you've been to Vegas for world title fights I haven't you have. You were here for the. Uh, you oh, were Haney. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that, I was it. Yeah, that's when I met you. So yeah, yeah. I wanted to bring that up to ask, uh, not to overlook Pete Dobson and Saturday, but has that thought crossed your mind, like fighting for a world title here in the fight capital of the world one day? Do you know, what? I'm just blessed, man. Like I'm just to even be headline here. Most great fighters don't even get to fight in Vegas, let alone headline. So for me, this is nothing short of a blessing. Obviously, with the controversy and everything that's going on back home. It's not the most ideal way of fighting out, but I believe the wrong doors open and the right doors close. The right doors open, the wrong doors close. Right, the wrong doors close. You know, so for me, that's how I view this is the right doors have opened, you know, and I feel like I'm just doing what I, I can control, what I can control. World title here, no problem. World title in England, no problem. Anytime, any place, anywhere. In a telephone box, in a 24-foot ring, where, wherever I'm ready to go, you know, and that's how I prepare. Connor, Fury against Susik. I'm back in the Brit. When the Brit is fighting the front fight, you always back back the Brit. Like period. That's just I feel like it should be an unwritten rule. But people don't do that. But I do. You know. No, nah, not by stoppage. I don't think. I don't. This, like, this goes points. But I feel like Fury. Not only because he's a Brit. So forget the biasness. I feel like Fury is the size of him. He's a, he's a freak, you know, the way he moves. You try staying on your toes for 12 rounds. 
and we weigh we weigh about his left leg. You know, so he's he's um he's just gifted. You know, he's born he is born to fight. Just your son's gonna be here on uh, Saturday watching. Is he gonna get that itch? Do you think? And you in, in 20 years or whatever him headlining it? No, my son won't be watching. He'll be he'll be with my uh, my family somewhere in the in the back room. I'll see him after the win though. Brilliant. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Connor, thank you for the time, brother. Family, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.